यू हैव टू बी विलिंग टू डू वॉट 99% परसेंट ऑफ डेवलपर्स आर नॉट विलिंग टू डू इट्स लाइक ए कन्वेयर बेल्ट ऑफ मीडियोक्रेटी दैट वी आर फेसिंग टूडे डूइंग वॉट एवरी वन एल्स इज डूइंग इज द वेरी डेफिनेशन ऑफ बिकमिंग एन एवरेज डेवलपर नोइंग द फैक्ट दैट यू मे फेल एंड इफ फेल ए लॉट देर हैव बिन डेज वेन आई हैव डाउटेड माई सेल्फ एज वेल एंड वॉट आई एम डूइंग एंड फेल्ट लाइक कंप्लीट वेस्ट ऑफ टाइम एंड नॉट गिविंग अप इफ यू वॉन्ट ए गुड एग्जाम्पल जस्ट लुक एट जेफ डीन फ्रॉम गूगल स्पेंट मोर देन थ्री ईयर्स वर्किंग विद एक्सेप्शनल टेक टैलेंट ओनली टू रियलाइज दैट यू डोंट नीड ए फैंसी डिग्री और नीड टू लव नंबर इन ऑर्डर टू बिकम ए ग्रेट सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर All you need is commitment and creativity. In the next few minutes, I will share with you exact strategies that I am following myself in order to become a better software engineer. So here are some of the frequently addressed aspects of becoming a great software engineer to those who are seeking direction in life, more specifically towards their engineering career. Well, you might be a fresh grad or a professional developer or someone who is looking for switching careers. But one thing is common. You are here because you want to become an exceptional developer. You want to level up. You want to be that 1% developer who knows more, who gets paid more. Let's get real here. The path to 1% top developer is not paved with mainstream advice. It's about adopting the mindset of great engineers, taking calculated risks, building unique skills. and understanding the core principles that drive majority of the success i am going to break down step by step these principles into four different categories the first principle thinking the t shaped advantage ambitious goals and impact finally comes the technical mastery to leverage it all so the first point is thinking in first principles Have you ever noticed that most of the common developers are learning the same frameworks, following the same tutorials and building the same projects to finally end up applying for the same job? It's like a conveyor belt of mediocrity that we are facing today. I'm not saying that mainstream skills are useless, but if you want to become an exceptional engineer, you have to think from the first principles like linus towards did when linus was building git the popular version control system he didn't follow the conventional wisdom of creating a version control system in fact he understood the fundamental problem with the version control systems and solved it from scratch within 10 days as linus said i am not a visionary i am an engineer i am looking at the ground and i want to fix the potholes before i fall in it but here is the hard truth doing what everyone else is doing is the very definition of becoming an average developer and there is nothing wrong with becoming an average developer but if you want to join the top 1% developer you have to be willing to do what 99% of developers are not willing to do I have noticed two types of developers in this competitive landscape those who work so hard following the conventional path that they lose interest of winning all together and they just continue just for the sake of completing that path because they have invested so much time and effort into it that they really can't change course right now well why do people in this path working so hard because there is already a competition from long list of people which are following the same exact conventional path and then there is type 2 engineers those who don't play this game all together they build their own path a riskier less traveled but ultimately more rewarding in the long term if you want a good example just look at jeff dean from google for me i am deliberately learning tech stack that are not yet mainstream but has a great potential of becoming mainstream well when i choose a tech stack i do not follow the conventional path that most of the developers are following i do not follow who is learning what i do not follow what majority of developers are working on and how many job offers are there in this particular stack but i learn them out of my genuine curiosity i am learning golang because i love to understand stuff or things from first principles and i see its potential as well and golang gives me that right amount of abstraction from programming language and forces me to understand everything from the basics without abstracting too much out like we do in java but did you know golang is also rising not in terms of jobs but in terms of popularity in open source communities and adoptions by developers who love to tinker in open source 
Many amazing and popular open source code base are now written in Golang, which is why I am learning Golang as well as backend development using Golang. I am not worried about if the mainstream has adopted Golang in their projects or companies are using actively this particular programming language or if it has a lot of job openings ready for you to hire. If it excites me and I see a potential in it, I am in. But here is what most YouTubers won't tell you. This approach that I have talked about becoming the type 2 developer who builds their own path is an approach that is often uncomfortable and very lonely. There will be days that you will doubt yourself that whether you are making the right choice of not following what your other friends are following in order to bag high paying tech jobs. And then there would be some days when you will be filled with ideas to start to build something of your own and forge your own destiny. Now the next point is become a T-shaped developer. The most valuable engineers that I have met recently aren't just specialists or generalists. They are the T-shaped developers. A common concept that you will see in many great engineers these days. This means having a deep expertise in one particular domain, the vertical line of the T and then a broader understanding of multiple different domains that are somehow related to this particular specialist domain, the horizontal line of the T. For example, you might be a specialist in building backend systems using either Golang or Node.js, but you also need to have a broader understanding in terms of how this backend system can be deployed, managed, its tracking and performance. You have to have a fair amount of understanding of all the aspects of building this particular backend system. I am talking about cloud infrastructures like AWS, GCP or Azure, security principles, CI-CD pipelines, system design and finally microservice architectures. These are some of the surrounding topics that makes your knowledge of backend system a wholesome knowledge. But wait. How do you know which knowledge or which domain to specialize in in the first place? Well, here you have to pick something that genuinely interests you. Second, it should also have staying power in the industry. Golang is already gaining popularity in open source projects as well as big enterprise projects as well. And third, this technology should align with where technology is headed in the future. The way I see it, many top engineers like Martin Fowler are already saying, the future is moving towards cloud and again Golang is a cloud native language by default. By the end of this video, I will share with you a particular approach that have helped me open doors that I never believed were possible. But now let's move on to our next point which is having highly ambitious goals and impacts. In a world which is already too noisy to hear you, you have to hit harder, work on really difficult and challenging problems. Look, if you set yourself to building something truly revolutionary or something very challenging, fully realizing that you don't know all the answers when you get started and still take the leap of faith, that bold move becomes your driving force in achieving greater things in life. The thing is, elite engineers do not follow any particular set roadmap. They build their own roadmap. They take the ownership of complex problems to solve and they find solution where no one else saw. All I am asking from you is to step out of your comfort zone. Even if you don't know all the answers, you just get started. If you follow this course, you will in two years definitely realize that it was all worth it. Now let's come to the third point, building value, not resume filters. Now this might come off as an counterintuitive thought where people might say that I can definitely get some good interviews with average resume and doing some lead code problems. But think about this, is the entire purpose of getting into tech is to get into big tech jobs and stay there forever? Well, I am not saying that you don't be part of any big tech company or crack any big tech jobs. All I am saying is to pursue something that truly builds value in the society and not just optimize yourself to crack that one particular interview. And at this point, many people will say that I have cracked interviews with 
average projects and no one even care about building projects anymore. However, this is absolutely wrong because many of the new age companies do focus on personal projects a lot. Many companies genuinely care about the extra mile that you have traveled to deliver value or impact in the society when no one explicitly asked you to do so. I have made such projects and I kid you not. I have got many more opportunities with these projects than I thought I deserved. So here is my advice to you as well as myself is to make meaningful projects that actually delivers value in the society and share it online, realizing upfront that it takes time to become a well-rounded software engineer. Now let's come to our final point is build your group wisely. People don't just bring opportunities, they bring feedback accountability as well as perspective. The role of college these days isn't about primarily for education. It's about the environment of like-minded people. Your peer group in college tells a lot about where your future is headed. So pick your group wisely. Deliberately surround yourself with people that are smarter than you, have different skills than you, challenge your thinking as well as share your ambition level. And finally, if you have reached the end of this video, I have a bonus point for you, which is artists and builders never quit. If you go through the history, you will see that there have been a lot of builders that have tried a lot of time in order to come up with great inventions. You have Thomas Edison, you have Leonardo who were pioneers in their field and that thing they have gained with lot of failures, lot of practice and not giving up. The power is knowing the fact that you may fail and if fail a lot. Your years of hard work might get washed up overnight. A project may get cancelled or a startup may get flopped or a technology that completely becomes irrelevant. But those who have the enthusiasm to build something new from scratch, who can look into the ashes of their previous work and see the foundation of something new. They are the ones who eventually build something great learning from all their past mistakes. For example, Jim Carmack rewrote the entire game engine when he found a better approach. Naval Ravikant puts it perfectly. The most successful people that I have known are the ones who have failed the most because they are the ones who have tried the most. So ask yourself this, do you have the courage to fail spectacularly and start all over again? Because that's not just a part of becoming the top 1%. It's a recurring feature of staying the 1%. Look, the journey isn't easy. It's paved with setbacks, lot of doubt will creep in and sometimes you will feel like giving up. There have been days when I have doubted myself as well and what I am doing and felt like complete waste of time. And other days when I saw a clear progress, a clear road where I am heading towards. But if you stay focused, keep learning, keep building, and share your work online, you will reach that 1% sooner or later. If you are committed to becoming the top 1%, let me know in the comments which of these particular strategies resonated with you the most. The comment section below is open for discussion. Until next time, keep coding, keep building awesome stuff and see you on the next video.